All right, well, let's go on to part two. Um, <clears throat> learn some basics, so we're going to start out with this one. We're going to go and open a new drawing, just brand new. So remember, we can click here for new, or we can go up under the application menu and go new. Either or, it doesn't matter. But when this comes up, we're not looking for a template. We're going to go here, open, and open with no template, imperial. All right, so... And you change your screen background already. It should still be the same for you. So you should not have that any issue with that. And the last one we talked about lines, polylines, circles, and you did the erase. So this one we're going to hit up and let's just start drawing with some arcs. Now, I'll be honest with the arcs. I usually use circles myself and end up trimming them out. But you have a variety of arcs. This is your basic three point. And you pick your point, you pick your point, and pick your point. That's all there is to it. But you got to really look at all the different things. Because when you're in a drawing, you're going to find that it asks you, it'll ask you certain things that you'll want. Such as you might find something that'll have a start, a center, and an end. So you just saw that last one. I just picked, picked, picked. Well, with this, it's going to ask you for the start. It's going to ask you for the center. And then it's going to ask you from there. So see, you're actually coming through. So there's lots of little things with it. Now, the thing I want you to see the most, and I'm not going to go through each and every one of these. I'd like you to try all of these. Um, but I want you to take a look like this one here, start, center, end, the one I just did. If I come here with this one, see down here in the command center, it says arc, specify start point or arc or center. This is where, you know, you started. If you want to switch that up, if you click center, you can now pick your center point, and now it'll ask you for the start, and it'll ask you for the end. So look down here. Anything you see that has got or, and they give you this here, you can usually click on them or type in these letters, and you can change everything around for it. So go ahead and try and use some of these, you can pause this for a while and go in and start using these ones here, okay? Please try them. You'll see that some of them make sense, some of them are okay, but go ahead and pause this off and try to play around with as many of these arcs as you can, all right? Now, I'm going to erase that off. Okay, now that you've played around with the arcs, I want you to come to this one here. This one is rectangle. And it's, it's as easy as it says. It's a rectangle. You pick it. It's going to ask you for your first corner. It's going to ask you for your second corner. It makes a rectangle. That's pretty basic. But let's go into what it's really meant for. You can go in to do a rectangle. And now, you see it down here? It says specify first corner or point. If I do that and I pick my first corner, look what comes out up down here. Area, dimensions, or rotation. Let's go ahead and do dimensions first. If I pick dimension, it's going to ask me my length of my rectangle. Let's just type in 5. Now it's asking me for the width. Let's go ahead and say 3. So now I have, this is 5 by 3. And notice, it's kind of following me around. It's asking now for us to put it in place. Do you want it up here? Do you need it down here? It depends on what you're doing. So you can pick it and it locks it in place. Now with rectangle also, this comes in, in handy too. Let's see. You pick your point, and now this time you can say area. And it's going to say, enter the area. Say we want 100. Uh, let's, let's make that too crazy. Let's go ahead and do 50. Then it's going to say, calculate rectangle base based on, let's go length. So let's enter the length on this one as 8. Right? There it is. This, the area in here, is going to be, a, you know, what we originally chose it to be. So you can change that up also. Now, let's go ahead and get rid of this real quick, because I want to keep things about this size so you can understand it a little bit better. This one right here, we go to rectangle. Now, at this point, if you look down here, see it says chamfer, 
elevation, fillet, thickness, or width. Let's go ahead and go into fillet. A fillet is an area that's got a rounded corner so that you don't have a sharp edge. So if I pick fillet and see it's asking me for the radius, let's type in one, as in one inch. Okay, so now if we come in here and pick our point and we, we draw our point out, notice how we now have on the sides, the corners are all rounded. That's what's called a fillet. Now once you put your fillet in, how to get rid of it when you come in if you want back to your rectangle and you're going, oh no, I've got this again. You just pick your rectangle, you pick your fillet again down here, or type in F for fillet, and now you tell it you want it to be zero. Zero takes it back to being just a rectangle. Okay? So that one's a pretty decent one. Now, let's pick the rectangle again. See this one right here? Chamfer? If we pick chamfer, Chamfer cuts things off at an angle. Well, I'll just show you one. It says enter the distance for the, the rectangle. I'm going to do one, and I'm going to do one again. I'm going to pick my point, and I'm going to pull it out. Now see how it's going? It's, there's my, you know, chamfer edge, where from here to here is one, and here to here is one. So it puts that on. And once again, if you do your rectangle again, you want to get rid of it, you pick your chamfer, and you tell it zero, enter, zero, enter. And it'll go back to a regular, regular one there. Okay? All right, now, in here too, with your rectangle, you have others. Elevation. You're not going to really tell the elevation on this because it actually takes, right now this is at an elevation zero. You would not notice it, and I don't want to get into too much stuff with it. I'm going to turn off one of my snaps real quick because it's kind of driving me crazy here. Um, thickness, we can go into thickness if we do this one and pick, um, let's go to width. If we do width, specify the line width, let's go 0.5. And so now we pick this. Now, this is 0.5 wide. Once again, if you do something crazy like that, all you have to do is hit your width again and type in 0 and enter, and it's going to be back to normal. Okay? Let's go ahead and try, <clears throat> let's see. The thickness and see with this one let's do the same thing with the 0.5 and this is really a command that I never had to really use this is going to show the thickness as far as and I should not probably show you this but I'm going to flip this up here so you can see a thickness see the thickness right there so that's something we don't really need to be into right now so that's just showing you that there is a thickness to this one here so this is the one you're probably going to enjoy and play around with the most. But just remember, you got fillets, you got chamfers, you got this is the width. So that should give you enough information on all the rectangles. Okay? So I'd like you to pause the film or pause this video right now, and I'd like you to play around with these. Now, if you have problems such as, let's say we're going to do a fillet, and I'm typing four inches. Okay, if I do my first corner and you're trying to draw this out and you're going to say, why is this not working? Why is this not working? I'm not seeing it. It's because you have to have a huge rectangle for that. Because if this corner here is four inches, you know you have to have a large one. Such as if you are at a very large area like this and we were to do a rectangle with a um, for the fillet, and we were to do something small like 0.2. And if you came in here and drew this huge square, you're not going to see very much. But if you zoom in, there it is. It's because it's so tiny. So that's what we have there. So pause this. I'd like you to go back and play with the arcs, the rectangles. And while you're at, go ahead and add some lines, polylines, your circles, your arcs, your rectangles. That'll get you into doing some of the things. Um, so pause it, play around for a while, feel comfortable with it, 
figure out what you're doing, and then I will get you onto something new. Okay, the next thing I want to show you is after you've played with these and you've started this back up, that's why you're hearing me, is I want to show you the move and I want to show you the copy. Okay, let me go in here and just draw a couple of lines. And I don't really care where they are or what I have with them. Okay, and now I'm going to take a circle. I'm going to make sure my snaps are on, which is the F3. See where my endpoint is here? I'm just going to draw a circle here. Now, your move command. When you go to your move command, once again, the pick is the same way. You pick it individually. You can do the move where you can window it. And remember, if you window going from your right to your left, you're going to end up picking everything else. And while we're at that, Say you do pick everything and you don't want it. Say you don't want this picked. If you hold your shift down and go over it and pick it, it'll deselect it. So remember, don't always just go to hit escape to deselect something. If you're going to do something and you end up picking the wrong stuff, hold your shift, pick your item that you don't want selected, and it'll be fine. So we've chosen our stuff to move. After we select everything that we want to move, we're going to right click. This is the huge thing I want you to realize. Read down here. It says specify base point. Your base point is where you're going to pick it up to and where you're going to put it. For a circle like this, say I want to move this circle to the end of this line here. I'm not going to randomly pick up here and kind of guess like this and say, okay, that looks like that's where it belongs. I'm not going to do that. What you want to do is you want to do your, your move. And I can say, I want the center of this to the end point of this. So you know where things are getting moved to so it actually matches up. Just as if we had another line and we wanted to move this line, pick it, right click, pick our base point. Maybe we want the midpoint here to go to the end point here. So you have to tell it where you're going to go and where you're going to go to. So make sure you choose in the right way. So that's your move command. Um, you can all do, also do things like this. Say you have this circle here and you can right click and say you just want to move this circle three inches over to here. You don't know where it is. So you can pick your base point anywhere. <clears throat> now I'm going to put my ortho, that F8 on, and I'm going to drag this in this direction. Hey, let's go ahead and just move this like 10 inches. So I drag it in this direction here, and I just type in 10 and hit enter. So it moved it from here to here is 10 inches. So if I drew a line in here from this point to this, it would actually be 10 inches. So you can move things like that. So you can pick it and tell it a direction if you wanted to move it up. You can tell it how far up, so you want it to come up 5 inches. And it'll be where you want it to be. But just remember, the most important thing is where, when you pick move, if I wanted the quadrant, see, I can pick it from there, I can move it to the end point. So you've got lots of, lots of options. Okay? So that's your move command. So that's something I want you to play around with, too. Now, your next command is copy. This one here, people like. So say you have something. You pick your copy command, say I have this circle, and say I want to take this circle and I want to put it on the end of every line. I pick it, I go there, here, here, and I'm just dropping it on the end. And notice I'm picking my endpoint so I know where exactly that they're going. So that's copy. It's that easy. The big thing is you got to remember where do you want it? If I pick this, just randomly picked up here and said, hey, I want to put this so it's touching on top of this one here so they're meeting. If I did that and I zoom in, it's overlapping. So I could do something as if I wanted to copy this. I can go from this quadrant to this quadrant. 
and you'll see that it matched up perfect. So you have to remember where you want to go with these things. Now, so right now you've gone through lines, polylines, circles, arcs, rectangles, move, copy, and erase. I'd like you to spend some time and go through all of those commands and play around. Be creative. Try what you can. Now, while I'm here with this, I also want you to notice, such as when I went over this move command, if I just leave my mouse over it, you get a little tiny helper where it's explaining what it is. So if you get stuck on something you're not quite sure, just leave your mouse over top and it flies out and it tells you exactly what you can do. It gives you a little bit of information. And notice down at the end of this, it said, you know, where it says copy, it says press one for more help. It'll take you to a help page. But these commands, I think, are pretty basic for you. So, all right, this ends part two. So practice, play. I know that sounds crazy, but the more you practice, the easier it's going to be coming for you. So get going on that. All right.